The Bad Batch, an elite force of leftovers. Their biological mutations gave them a significant increase in their skills and combat capabilities, but one detail about the Bad Batch captivates me more than their physical enhancements. That detail being their equipment. The Bad Batch sports some of the most customized armor in Star Wars, certainly the most complicated assortment of clone armors we have ever seen in one group. With squadmate Tech in the lineup, his attention to detail and unique ability to modify their equipment, the Bad Batch was quick to customize absolutely everything that came their way. But even with their distinct appearances, we know some of the lingering foundations of their armor. All of the original Bad Batch members, those being Hunter, Wrecker, Crosshair, and Tech, all sport a modified variation of the Republic Commando Katarn class armor. With Tech straying furthest away from the original design and Hunter staying the closest to the core suit. Now, with Hunter in particular, this design makes a lot of sense. He was trained as a Republic Commando, he knows the good aspects and the bad aspects of the equipment, and overall it is clear that he liked the foundations of the Katarn armor. Of the changes Hunter made to his personal armor, only a few were significant enough to mention here. The most obvious change made by Hunter to the Katarn armor is the replacement of the helmet. The appearance of the helmet itself is very unique. No stock helmet can fit the description of what the final result of this helmet ended up being. But with some scrutiny, we can begin to spot the foundations of the parts used to assemble it. One can only assume that each time the Bad Batch reported to Kamino after a successful operation, Tech couldn't help but stroll through the research and development facilities and snag interesting equipment that he came across. Because when it came to Hunter's helmet, the baseline of the armor actually resembles what the community would later coin as the Phase 3 Clone Trooper armor. The mouthpiece and the visor on this experimental helmet are very similar, with the overall shape matching the elements used by Hunter in the end. And the primary infantrymen of the Clone Legions also share a lot of the aspects with the same mouth feature. We all see that thing on the Phase 2 Clone Trooper helmet. Now, Hunter made additional modifications to the sides of his helmet, which included audio enhancements, allowing him to use his full enhanced senses as he pleased, and a slightly extended mouthpiece, likely to give his incredible sense of smell more room to work with. The next most notable change after the obvious one is the slimmer profile. Hunter reduced the overall outline of his armor and formed the internal plating to fit closer to his body. Adapting the shape gave his unique physical strength and mobility a much wider range. Fine-tuning this armor increased his evasive ability and allowed Hunter's CQC fighting style to truly shine and lead his brothers from the front line. And finally, instead of a wrist-mounted vibro knife, Hunter elected to swap out the tool with that of a freehand knife, I suppose in case he wanted to throw it. With all these minor changes, you can truly see that the Katarn armor is basically one and the same with Hunter, just with minor alterations. Hunter's armor is a testament to the show and is the thing they use in most of the promotional material, and it makes a lot of sense. It's one of their most iconic looks. Similar to Hunter, Wrecker did not stray too far away from the baseline Qatar armor as well. His modifications simply stacked upon what the armor was already good at, increasing the size to fit his body and adding more plating for absorbing blaster impacts. The Qatar armor was originally designed to contain the most amount of physical protection without a total loss of mobility a physically capable commando could carry throughout the duration of a combat. But with Wrecker, his increased strength nullifies the restrictions on weight and allowed him to turn himself into a mobile tank. The first change made was obviously increasing the thickness of the armor and adding neck plating that could potentially deflect a lethal shot off of him. His hulking frame created a frightening silhouette for intelligent life forms whenever they faced him down to dissuade them from attacking him further and realized that there is no chance that their small arms blasters will penetrate him at any time with this massive wall running towards them. His helmet, however, appears to be an entirely custom amalgamation of heavily plated helmet parts with a focus on absolute protection. Wrecker will use his head like a battering ram at times, and if needed, he has complete faith in the padding and plating of the helmet to take on anything. And with how thick this armor ended up being, I would wager that his equipment resembled the protection and survivability of a full-fledged Republic Starfighter. Up next, we have Crosshair. While he was a member of the Bad Batch, his armor also followed the Katarn formula. Similar size changes to Hunter on his armor decreased his profile and added on additional attachments such as ammunition pouches, tactical equipment that just made his equipment use faster and more efficient than the two previous members. 
His helmet appears to be another one of Tech's combined custom experiments, with a similar design to that of the clone helmet sported by both Commander Wolf and Commander Neo, respectively. Crosshair's helmet is that of a sniper. Clear modifications were made with the rangefinder attachment, a reduced forward profile, and a notch on his scope eye, allowing him to have full utility of his scope without any obstructions, as well as sporting a further pushed out side-mounted respirator without the central components present on the helmet, one of the more unique clone helmet designs. But the most significant armor change was actually his backpack. It had a holster slot, numerous tactical control elements, and communication gear. His backpack was the most unique in the squad, second to only the gear sported by Tech. Ah yes, Tech, you crazy equipment modifying son of a fet. Tech, without a doubt, has the most heavily modified armor of the Bad Batch. His armor isn't even the same color as the rest of the boys, and when diving into the specific parts he used, I found some very interesting aspects. To start, Tech sports a modified Phase 2 Clone Trooper Scout helmet, with a removed visor allowing him to fully integrate his full-time ocular equipment without any obstructions, as well as side-mounted communications gear linked directly to his custom HUD. He also had modified his Katarn chest armor with aspects that would likely resemble what would be underneath the full plate of the Katarn. But without any of the abdomen plating present, this armor appears to have been personally welded together by Tech himself, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Next, I would like to point out a surprising detail. While I was looking at his crotch, yes, I know, I was looking at his crotch, but it's obviously different than the others. That's because Tech uses a Phase 2 Clone Trooper crotch plate for protecting his genitalia. Not a detail I would have expected, but it's certainly one that now that I've seen, I cannot unsee. In addition, Tech wears Mandalorian leather holsters, similar to the style of that worn by Jango Fett, emulating his dad the best he can. Tech also heavily modified his arm gear with an integrated data pad and pouches up on his upper arm for additional storage. And finally, a customized backpack to hell and back. Tech took every part that he liked and made your cutscene character with the armor that you always wanted. And with a late addition to the group, Echo brings the most sanity in his armor choices. His baseline armor is simply the Clone Trooper Phase 2 armor without the standard abdomen plating, instead opting to use a padded undersuit for light protection and increased mobility. And after the events which led Echo to join the Bad Batch in the first place, certain accommodations to the armor needed to be made in order to operate in a practical manner. Clearly, after joining the group, Tech and Echo sat down and designed a one-of-a-kind helmet for him, with an open backside on the helmet for the integrated computer system currently mounted to the back of his skull. And of course, some accommodations for his Scomp Link arm replacement, making the armor to Scomp transition seamless for the old ARC Trooper. That about wraps up the armor and equipment breakdown of the Bad Batch. With this new season of the Batch releasing, I figured it would be a perfect time to make this video. Obviously, the Batch's gear isn't going to be quite as whole as it was, but now with the knowledge gained from this experience, it will have increased your understanding of what they operate with in the current day. The biggest change being Wrecker cutting apart his armor, probably, but... It's mostly for comfort's sake. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of College of Lore and our first episode covering the various armors in the Star Wars galaxy, but if you want to hear more, be sure to tell us in the comments down below. And if you want to hear about the various ship manufacturers in the Star Wars universe, we currently have three great videos for you to go check out. Anyways, I have been Sam, and this has been College of Lore. Thanks for watching. <laughs>